Hello, and welcome to our group presentation. In this presentation, we will be discussing one of the fashion industry's top leading women, a leader in her own right, Anna Winter. I think what I often see is that people are frightened of fashion and that because it scares them or it makes them feel insecure, they put it down. Anna Winter was born in London in 1949. She's the eldest daughter of Charles Winter, former editor of the London Evening Standard newspaper. Her rise to the business world started when she landed a job at Harper's and Queen's in the fashion department. Ultimately, after many positions, Winter, in 1988, landed an editorship at American Vogue. Winter rose through the ranks to head editor of American Vogue, making her one of the most successful women in the industry. For Anna Winter is well renowned for her no-nonsense work ethic and her chilly demeanour, earning her the moniker Nuclear Winter. But is there more to Anna Winter than just hard work ethics which make Winter a fighting force in today's business climate? Or does she possess some specific traits, some qualities set out in many theories of today to do with leadership? She has been named the 41st most powerful woman in the world by Forbes magazine. Well, you can be successful in Hollywood without Steven Spielberg's blessing. You can publish software in Silicon Valley without Bill Gates' blessing. But what is clear, you can't be successful in fashion industry without Anna Winter's blessing. Those were the words from director of September issue movie about the Vogue and Anna Winter. <laughs> what makes her a, a leader is strong personality, traits and characteristics, influential behaviour and her leadership style that she adapts to every situation. Uh, she developed her leadership styles from her father uh, who was the editor in Evening Standard in London. Even the biggest designers in industry are nervous about her verdict and consult her before making their new collections. Anna Winter sadly has unique key qualities that have been practiced and exhibited constantly over time. So that her personality has come to be known as aloof, emotional distance and demanding. Hannah Winter grew up in England, which is known for not being a particular emotional culture. She was also born in the early 1940s, and the previous generation was less likely to be comfortable exhibiting sentiment or emotions. Therefore, it could be reasonable to assume that since she grew up in a culture that was collectively distant, and she generated and modelled her father's personality, being austere and cold comes really naturally to her. Energetic, enthusiastic and sociable aren't exactly the words to describe her, but she's clearly passionate and committed. She's notoriously unkind, critical and impassioned, but she's definitely preserved, devout and hard worker. Anna Winter is generally not nervous or emotional. She's always quite in control. We cannot describe Anna Winter with just one word because she has evolved her personality throughout the years. Although people behave differently depending on their age, who they are or what situation they're in, we all have constant call traits. Her father had the reputation of being a tough, humorless newspaper editor. It is likely that she inherited many of his traits. The trait approach emphasizes the use of big five personality tests. In terms of extroversion, Winter would rate highly because she is very dominant and opinionated. She is clearly passionate and committed. While she is extremely selective about who she chooses to socialise with, she is still a very sociable person. In terms of agreeableness, I would rate her very, very low, as she is not friendly, warm, cooperative or trusting. In fact, she is rather unkind, critical and impatient. She would rate highly on consciousness, because to get where she is right now requires determination, motivation, perseverance, responsibility, devotion and hard working. 
Ironically, I would rate her low on neuroticism. She is generally not nervous, worrying, worrying or emotional. She is rather in control. Even though she is very harsh, she is not a moody person because her personality is rather constant. Another area of leadership that Anna Winter best demonstrates is the style approach. The style approach emphasizes on the behavior of, of the leader, what they do and how they act. Anna Winter's leadership style is, uh, adapts a very authoritarian style approach due to the fact that she has a clear expectation of how the work should be carried out and she has a clear vision of her ideas. Therefore, according to the University of Michigan studies, uh, her leadership style might be identified as authority compliance. Anna Winter emphasizes more on the task and job requirements. Communication with subordinates is only with a, a reason or to give instructions. Uh, according to the Guardian's article that quotes Vogue insiders, they say that she is never going to be friends with her assistant. Former personal assistant of Anna, Warren Weisberger, wrote the 2003 best-selling roman The Devil Wears Prada, later made into a successful movie, which is believed to be based on Anna's winter personality. Although she argues that she, uh, the film does not portray her behavior, um, her reaction to this is that, unfortunately, you don't have enough women in power, or at least I don't know them to copy. She is like a dictator for her employees. However, in a very recent article, two weeks ago, she literally outlines her leadership style, saying, I'm much more of a believer in finding a great team of people and trusting them to follow their own instincts. This showed, shows that Anna Winter is giving opportunities to her employees to be involved and committed to their work. She's also consulting with her creative director, Grace Coddington, which demonstrates that Anna does not make decisions based on, on her sole input, but rather allows decisions to be influenced by those around her. Based on the leadership grid, this can be identified as team management style approach. This shows that Anna Winter does not incorporate one particular leadership style, but rather a mixture of several. She has changed her behavior over the years and developed her style working in Vogue. In addition, the transformation of leadership theory is a process that changes and transform, transforms people. It is concerned with ethics, values, standards, and long-term goals. It involves an influence that moves followers to accomplish more than what is expected from them. Transformational leadership is when a person engages with others and creates a connection that rises the level of motivation in both the leader and the follower. Anna Winter's leadership approach inspires followers to accomplish great things. She is the role model and she creates organizations that can empower followers to meet higher standards. She is the type of a leader that gives meaning to organizational life. The transformational leadership factor that Anna Winter possesses is the idealized influence. A leader who acts as a strong role model and who is deeply respected by her followers. The one who provides a vision and a sense of mission to her subordinates. Can you think of an aspect of the fashion industry that she isn't somehow involved in? to the style, trait, and transformational theory, it has been shown that Anna Winter is a strong person and a lot of people from the fashion sector are, in, are influenced by her. Over the years, she has become a leader of, among leaders. Due to many different reasons, from her upbringing, the environment around her, and the fact she seems to exhibit qualities inherent of a leader. What brands can learn from Anna Winter is to be innovative but stay true to their identity, to push boundaries and work with purpose, to be provocative and to stay mindful of the company they keep, to be transparent and to engage their employees.